All right, well, thanks for, for you guys coming today. We appreciate you. Um, again, we started this monthly seminar series purely for education to talk about senior-related housing, things that you would be interested in, and things like um, estate planning, elder <coughs> care, different things like that. So we're having a different subject every month, and we're going to be inviting people in on panels as well who are experts in other areas. So hope that you enjoy it and um, that you'll come back again. So, all right, well, let's get started. Um, that was the end. Okay. So, today we're talking about home ownership and retirement. And we're not really going to be talking about selling your home to answer your question. So, um, my name is Stephanie Parson. This is Joelle St. Clair. And I'm a licensed realtor with Keller Williams Realty West. I've been assisting individuals and families in buying and selling homes for over 18 years. Um, in the last several years, I find myself working more with the older adult homeowners, and um, it kind of led me to seeking to be specialized in that segment. So I've committed myself to helping um, kind of that age category to simplify the downsizing process or the right sizing process um, for those needing to transition to a more manageable residence or senior community. Um, and my background is in event planning, organizing, and real estate as well. So Stephanie and I have worked together for about eight years, and together we created um, Mature Move Solutions. And again, our goal is just to educate seniors, and if and when they're ready to downsize, to be a resource for them. Okay. So home ownership and retirement. So I'm sure many of you remember purchase, purchasing your first home and remember what that meant for you and your family and it's been called the American Dream. So owning a home comes a whole new set of responsibilities. There's a lawn to take care of, maintenance repairs on the home, and a lot more things to keep clean. So it probably wasn't so hard to keep up with those things when you were younger, but we age and our circumstances change. So for me and my husband, we are late 50s, um, we live on an acre and a half. We have a lot of mature trees, some 100 years old, and we're virtually empty nesters now. So um, every fall, I'm reminded of how much maintenance there is on what we own. So we bag over 100 bags of leaves every fall, and um, it's getting harder and harder, you know. So. Um, we've been looking and seriously thinking about, you know, downsizing or also known as right sizing um, for ourselves. So for some people, it's time to downsize and move into something a little more manageable. And for others, you know, you're still enjoying your home and you have no reason that you need to make a move. Um, today's seminar is to help you keep you informed and uh, a prepared homeowner. Your home is typically your biggest asset. Um, and we'll be talking about different living options available and their benefits, when to downsize, the value of your home, also aging in place. Um, you've got a handout with our main headings to take notes on, and if you have any questions or comments, Raise your hand, all questions are good. Um, and we'd uh, love to talk to you more in depth afterwards too, if you're so inclined. So let's get started. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love raking leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I have gum balls. <laughs> yes, those are the worst. Yep. <laughs> right. Well, like Stephanie said, I'm sure you've heard that house values across the nation are on the rise. Um, because houses are in high demand and people are paying, we've seen people paying way over asking price, waiving inspections, waiving appraisals just so that they can get into a home. But value looks different to different people and this is kind of funny, but we like to share this with sellers because it's true. Mm. I'm sure you've heard the saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
And if you're a seller, you have lots of memories and emotional attachment to your home. You're very proud of it. Um, you see your home as very valuable. On the flip side, the middle picture, if you're a buyer, um, you don't have a, an emotional connection yet. So you don't see the house quite as valuable as that seller does. And then the last picture, when the inspector comes, he's very unattached to your house. And he's looking at the functionality of your house to make sure that everything is working properly. And we don't have this up there, but we can actually add another point of view. And that would be the appraiser. So when the appraiser comes, he's comparing your house at this point in time to what other houses in the area have sold for. So he's looking at basic things like number of bed, number of bath, um, amenities within the home, things like that. So it's kind of funny, but it's also very true. There's a few other ways we look at home values as well. So the first one is assessed value. So this determines how much you owe in real estate taxes. Insurance value, that's how much it would cost to rebuild your house at this point in time. Appraised value um, is formulated by an appraiser, usually used for lending purposes. Market value is an agreed upon amount between a buyer and a seller. And then even Zillow has a value, it's called Zestimate. Um, the, we like to tell people that these are not usually accurate. A lot of people like to go to Zillow first to see what their home is worth, um, but you can actually go on the Zestimate and correct the value of your home by just updating the information, such as bedrooms, um, any updates that you've made. So um, that's something that you can check out as well. Okay, so let's look at um, some recent statistics. It has been a crazy real estate market, as Joelle mentioned before. So this is um, a snapshot of comparing May and June 2022, so our current time frame, to the same time frame of 2021. So average days on market were 15, which is pretty low. I mean, but here we have 13. So it's two days, but they're pretty small numbers. So it's definitely gone down. Average percentage over the list price, 2021, 103.5% versus 105.6%. Okay. Um, and this is just on average. Average list price, 320,550 versus current 360,378. So that's what, $40,000 difference in a year? That's a pretty significant jump. Most desirable homes are still the Almighty Ranch home. Works for so many different types of living situations. So let's move into funding the purchase of a home, okay? So now let's say you'd like to sell your home and purchase another one. So when it comes to selling your home, your home there are lots of easy sale companies out there. Um, they have a lot of advertising, they've got signs on every corner, they won't give out any names, but they will offer you a low ball offer in exchange for an easy sale. And then typically go resell your house at a higher value. And if you truly just want an easy sale, that's fine. But for some seniors, every penny matters for their retirement. So choose a good realtor to represent you when you make that decision, if you wanna um, have a property to put on the market. So what are some financial options available to help you purchase another home? Well, obviously, if you currently own a home, and you want to buy something else, funds from your current property um, can go towards the purchase or at least a large down payment. You can get a new loan, okay? And by the way, it's not age restricted. So you could be 75 years old and still get a 30 year mortgage if you want, okay? Reverse mortgage. Um, reverse mortgages are complicated and hard to understand. So I won't even begin to go in and talk to you about that. I know a little bit about them. Next month, we are gonna have some experts, two experts in reverse mortgages. 
to explain and talk about advantages and disadvantages. But you can now make a purchase or refinance into a reverse mortgage. You do have to be at least 62 years of age. So typically you don't have to make any monthly mortgage payments and the loan does not come due until you move, sell the home, or pass away. Capital gains. Um, you can avoid a significant portion of capital gains through the home sale exclusion. And it's a large tax break that the IRS offers to people who sell their home. And they're pretty simple. And the rules are, it has to be your primary residence and you have had to have owned it for at least the last 24 months out of the past five years. And you can't have claimed another capital gains exclusion in the past two years. I believe the amount is 250000 per person. So if you're married, that's a total of 500000 So it's a pretty high amount, but as values keep rising, that amount isn't you know, so big anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, Joelle? When to downsize, right size, and consider other options. So, at some point, staying in your home might not be what's best for you anymore. And it might be time to downsize or right size or um, just consider other options. We have lots of memories in our home and we are very attached to our houses, like we talked about before. But we have to remember that our home is also our house. So, with our house comes um, ongoing maintenance, expense, um, it might not fit our lifestyle anymore, and it can become a burden. And when it becomes a burden, it actually becomes an anchor because it's taking away energy and time that you could be spending on things that you enjoy doing. So um, these are some signs that indicate it might be time to consider downsizing. Okay, first one, the maintenance is overwhelming. So if your house needs a lot of repairs, the roof needs to be replaced, you have a plumbing leak, or your yard's overgrown, um, handling these issues, you're essentially using energy that you could be using elsewhere on more fun things. Um, it can be overwhelming finding a reputable contractor, scheduling the repair, and overseeing the process. Um, and I don't have to probably mention that um, as we age, seniors are known to be um, susceptible to being taken advantage of a lot. So um, by living somewhere in a maintenance-free type housing, it frees up your time and energy for you to focus on things you enjoy. Um, safety is a concern. Again, as our bodies get older, we're more prone to falling. Stairs become difficult to maneuver. Maybe your laundry's in the basement or your bedroom is on the upper level and it's essential for you to take the stairs. So downsizing to one level can help your body feel better, cut out unnecessary wear and tear and potential risks. Um, a portion of your house is unused. I find this a lot. Um, as our homes become harder to keep clean with age, um, they're more expensive to heat and cool. We have to pay taxes on all the square footage, not to mention, you know, keep up the maintenance and care of all your excess things in the house, furniture. Um, the reason you don't part with things is because you have the space to keep it in, so you have no reason to, you know, simplify your life. But downsizing will help you do that, and then you'll get down to the things you really need and that you love. So I know a lot of people never go down in their basements anymore. Um, they have a risk of falling and their laundry's not down there. You don't need to go down there anymore. So you don't know what's going on down in the basement. And a lot of times we find there has been stuff going on in the basement, critters, mold, things like that. Um, and like mold and water, um, there's risk of damage, um, your personal belongings getting ruined, and mold is a big deal for your home, but also for your health. Um, another reason is you feel isolated. Studies have shown that seniors who stay actively engaged socially and intellectually, we live longer, healthier, and more satisfying lives. 
when a community like a retirement community provides meals, transportation, and social activities that are convenient, most people find that it increases their energy, they have decreased illnesses, and have an overall more positive outlook on life. And another reason you've experienced a health change or had a recent diagnosis. Maybe your health has been declining slowly over the years, or there might could be a sudden change. It may be time to start thinking about downsizing or right-sizing because it's not an option anymore to stay where you're at and you're forced to do so. We do advocate that it is much better to be proactive and make those times, kinds of decisions before you're forced to make them and have to be in a hurry. So it's hard to leave behind a place so near and dear to our hearts. Um, as the saying goes, home is where the heart is. Um, it's not the building or the stuff. So seniors who make the decision to downsize themselves find it helps simplify their life and health. So again, we encourage start planning today for tomorrow. So when you are ready to downsize or right size, there are several different maintenance-free options to choose from. Um, last month we talked specifically about uh, senior communities or retirement communities, but today we want to talk about if you're not quite ready to move into a community like that. Um, these are all the housing options available to different categories, and we're going to focus today on the ones in red. So the first one is condos, and condominium or condo it's a form of ownership of a unit. So a condo owner has title to the condo interior, but it does not own the land in which the condo sits. So we like to say it's walls in. So you can paint, you can do minor renovations within your unit. Um, there's usually assigned parking spots. Sometimes there are carports available. Um, sometimes buildings are secured access. For example, there is a community called Heritage Common or Heritage Condos, and it does have one secure building called the Trenton Building. And so it has secured access, it has elevators, um, and it has underground parking spaces as well. When most of us think of a condo, I think we think of a unit in a larger building or complex, kind of like an apartment, usually stacked with shared walls, floors, and ceiling. So you might say, I can't, I can't do the stairs, why would I move there? But they actually have ground level condos, walk on level condos, and a lot of them do have elevators as well. So it is very doable for a senior. Condos are a part of a homeowners association and they have restrictions on, um, that govern how unit owners share the space. So owners pay a monthly fee towards some insurance of the buildings, um, sometimes utilities such as water, sewer, trash, um, and general maintenance of the common areas. So like hallways, parking lots, workout facilities, pool areas, lawn care, exterior building maintenance. So while you can't, um, you don't own the common areas and you can't make changes to them, you do have access to them and can use them. Condo developments can also be restrictive of pets such as size and breed and number of pets. Um, they can also be restrictive of financing, such as FHA, VA loans, um, and they usually have specific rules about renting. So sometimes they don't allow rentals at all, and sometimes they have a maximum number of rentals. So really the main benefit of a condo is you don't have to do any outside work, no lawn care, snow removal, etc. Um, typically, it's a very carefree lifestyle, so you can lock the door, go on an extended vacation, and not have to worry about anybody knowing that you're gone. Okay, so let's take a, a look at a couple examples of condos in St. Charles County. Um, so this is Sugarwood Condominiums in St. Peter's off 94, 364. I'm never sure what to call it anymore. Um, these are two level buildings. Um, your actual living space is one level, okay? So you're either first level or second level. Second level, obviously, you have a flight of stairs to go up. So they're considered a garden style um, with an open breezeway concept. So this development doesn't have any elevators in the building. Um, 
they're older, they're about 35 years old, this complex. Um, most are two bedrooms with one or two baths, and most of them include laundry inside your home. Um, sales for this development have been averaging in the 150s. <clears throat> and there is a monthly condo fee on that as well. Um, next we have Meadow Ridge Condos and Villas. Anybody familiar with these particular ones? No? So they're located off Highway 94 and Kisker Road. Um, and they have a mix of condos, which are these, and then these, which are villas, okay? Um, and it is very confusing is the difference between the two. So um, in here, the villas on the right here, these have one or two bedrooms, and they also come with typically one or two garages in these, okay? Recent sales have been from 160,000 to about 215,000 for the villas. They do not have basements either. Um, on the other side, the garden apartments, they're selling for the mid 130s. Their fees are about 250 a month. Um, they, there has been in this development, I noticed a lot of people buying them as investment properties and renting them out. That would be in the condos there. Just as a side note, the average rental amount they're getting for these for a one bedroom is about 1,100 a month, and a two bedroom, 14 to 1,500 dollars a month. Next is the old Bogey Hills um, condos. These are located at the corner of Country Club and Veterans Memorial, next to the boat courts. Some. A few garages. Garages are not attached. You have to walk to them. Um, and there's not enough for every unit there. No elevators. Monthly fees are kind of high there. They're approximately <coughs> $230 a month. And that includes the landscaping, lawn care, does include water, sewer, and trash. They have their own clubhouse and they have a swimming pool. Um, these are selling between $100 and $120,000. And a one bedroom that I've seen renting in there goes for about $800 a month, and a two bedroom for about $1,100 a month. Yes, sir. Does the renter have to pay the condo fee? Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, it is the owner, oh, the landlord, pay. that pays the condo fee, okay. okay? Because if it doesn't get paid, it's a lienable item, okay? But that's something to definitely find out if you, you know, are on either side, the landlord or the tenant. Make a big difference in the monthly bill. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> I have several people who live in, friends who live in retirement places. Mm -hmm. And they said the biggest problem is that the HOA supposedly has an office here, but the home office is in Las Vegas or San Diego or something like that. Mm -hmm. And getting things done is like major surgery. Okay. Yeah, definitely something to factor in. Yeah. Um, the next one we're looking at is Heritage Condos in St. Charles. They're located off of the Heritage exit at 94 and 364. Um, on the very top, and, and you can probably tell by the style, these are, these are older. Okay. This is the Trenton building right here. So they have enclosed interior hallways um, and they're secure buildings with underground parking. Um, and then these here, um, they're a little bit newer, um, but they have typically, most of the units have been converted to have laundry in the unit, but they also have a common laundry in a lot of the buildings as well. They have some carports and no garages um, in these buildings. Um, over there to the left, that would be, they're called a patio home there. There's lots of different terms out there. Um, these have, can have basements, some do, some don't, 
Most of them have garages tucked in back through a courtyard, your own private courtyard. Um, so there's lots of options and varieties at Heritage. They also have a couple, I'm gonna say like six buildings that are less than 20 years old. They're more luxury. Um, they do have elevators. There are only two, I believe two levels. Um, very spacious and they do have the underground parking in each of the buildings. They're very small buildings. I think there's only four units in every building. Um, next, more condos. This one on the left being Mystic Village in Lake St. Louis. This is about the most affordable in, in the area in St. Louis, uh, St. Charles County. They do not have any laundry in the units. So you have to walk to a separate building and carry your laundry to do, do your laundry. Um, the lower levels, they're very dark. They don't have many windows, but they're very inexpensive um, to live in. Over on the right is um, Springhurst. This is in O'Fallon. Um, basically, it's a new and improved version of Mystic, Vill uh, Mystic Village. So every condo has a carport. Every home has your own laundry in it. You get a deck or a patio, and they have lots of natural light. Um, Springhurst condos, very popular <coughs> with younger single people or young professionals and you know us, us older group they're about a thousand square feet they're selling as high as 190,000 now um, on them the condo fee is 215 a month but you need to know what it includes that includes your water sewer and trash it includes all exterior building maintenance long hair, snow removal, all of that. So you don't have to do anything outside if you don't want to. But as you pointed out, you do have a management company. So if you have a problem with something on the outside, you do have somebody to contact. But maybe they're not always right here on site or in the area. Most of them are not on site. Most of them I have found that they do have local management companies at least. Um, next, we're going to talk about detached and attached villas. Okay, so Joel, you're going to talk about So that. it can get confusing when we talk about villas because there's not one set definition of what a villa is. Um, so when we talk about villas, it's more about the lifestyle that you're looking for. Um, it's a type of condo, but it isn't always a condo. You own the land surrounding the, the, the villa, and you may share at least one common wall with the neighboring villa, or it might be com completely detached. So you can see the difference there of those two. Um, most of the time, there's no exterior maintenance that you're required to do. You have a little more ownership of a villa versus a condo because you do own the land surrounding it, unlike the condo. Villas are typically, um, they have private driveways and garages. Um, some cater to families of all ages and others are specifically for older adults. Most villas are detached or built in twos, sharing a common wall, but they could include more villas in a row than just two. They are also part of a homeowners association and owners do pay a monthly fee that covers maintenance of common areas, pools, clubhouse, as well as snow removal, landscape maintenance, building exterior maintenance. Um, depending on the community, some do allow pets and fences, um, but there are restrictions. So the bottom line is if you're looking for a specific lifestyle, if you're looking for a fenced yard for your pet or a third car garage for your extra toys, um, it's important that you have a knowledgeable and experienced real estate agent who can help you find exactly what you're looking for because you could be looking and looking and looking in all the wrong places and not find specifically you know that free car garage or the fence yard for your pets so let's look at some other communities that are considered villas so over here on the left this is southern oaks in st charles it's located off of fifth street 
These were built in about 1995. Um, very popular when they were built. They're still very popular. Um, they mainly have one level living, but they also have basements. They can, um, when they were built, you could get it finished downstairs with a third bedroom and a bathroom, summer walkouts. Um, but those, they were new to our area at that point in time. There could be six of them attached, okay? So improvements have been made in the setup of villas over time. Um, so just to give you an idea on pricing, Southern Oaks, the two bedroom, two baths, have been selling for about $240,000. Um, their fees are $185 a month. Um, the, um, yes, the um, three bedrooms, uh, I've seen one going as high as $300, so they're going $270 to $300. These, um, the fees cover, you know, your, your lawn care, snow removal. It also covers exterior building insurance. So your association is responsible for roof gutters, downspouts, exterior maintenance. That's included in the monthly. Included in the monthly. The, the details on all of these can be different and we have to research and look at the indentures or covenants which can be about this thick to really dig in and understand what you as a homeowner is responsible for and what the association is responsible for. But by paying that monthly fee, you actually are paying for it. It's just money being pooled and they have a master insurance policy to cover the exterior of the buildings. So <clears throat> that's Southern Oaks. Um, they're about 1,400 square feet, 25 years old. This over here would be the next generation. Um, this is St. Andrews and St. Charles, which is on the old um, St. Charles uh, or St. Andrews golf course, for those of us who have lived in the area for quite a while. This is showing a detached villa. So when they started building St. Andrews, they all were basically twinsies, okay? So you were an end unit, but you also shared a wall with somebody else. Um, on St. Andrews, those fees are a little bit different. So they are 205 a month, plus you pay an annual fee of 465 per year, okay? The reason you pay 465 per year is because you are in a bigger subdivision and they have lakes and walking trails and nice signage and things like that. They want everybody who lives in that subdivision to contribute to that. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Sometimes there's a monthly fee. Sometimes there's also an annual fee. Um, in St. Andrews, that 205 a month, um, they do have exterior maintenance, so your roof is covered, things like that. Um, they also, an improvement from, say, like Southern Oaks, is they've irrigated all the lawns and you don't pay for that. That's covered by the association, both the water and the care of the irrigation system. So you have much nicer looking lawns there. Uh, when you mentioned the covenants and restrictions, that's something in there that in the covenants and restrictions, it says they can raise the fee X percentage per year. Sure. They can also uh, assess, do uh, special individual assessments mm -hmm. uh, too, which, right. you know, like you said, that's why you need to talk to a real estate person so you understand that. You, you know, it's it's in restriction. Exactly. And those are a lot of fun to read. <laughs> 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 um, okay, next, these are, um, these are basically detached villas. So we're getting even a, a little bit newer here. These are kind of, they're basically single family homes, but you're paying a monthly fee for some services, and you don't have an option to opt out of the monthly fee, okay? Um, they're also known as freedom homes. So this one on the left is Cordova, 
in O'Fallon off of Bryan Road. Um, that one, most of them have actually three car garages. So those can be for well, people who have a new three car garage, you know. Um, it could also be not just for the older age group, but for a younger age group, okay, that want that simpler lifestyle, okay. Um, so let's see here. Cordova, um, their fees are about $250 a month. And that includes the exterior lawn, snow, irrigation. Um, it doesn't cover anything else. It's two fifty a month. They're also selling for about five hundred thousand. They do have a vehicle charging station, though. Okay. Um, Bella Vista. This is the. Um, this is actually a property that that I'm putting a sign in the yard later today. Um, this is also considered, I like to call them freedom homes, um, detached, you're paying a monthly fee. They're selling for about 400,000 at this location and they're about 1,800 square feet. So the freedom homes are typically a little bit bigger than the villas, so they tend to be more for maybe a younger senior maybe you need that home office maybe you maybe you're like me and my husband we still have one child in um, in college so we might want the the three bedrooms and the three car garage still so um so again these are another option you know to consider um next we have sanford farms this is a fairly new development um, I believe all the Freedom Homes have been completed in there. One of the new things that they've done at the Freedom Homes in Sanford Farms is they allow fences. So if you have somebody who has children, if you're younger, or you have a pet, or you just want to fence in your area and mark your territory, you can do that. Whereas in most of the other locations, they don't allow fences. They want to get in and mow from, you know, beginning a street to end the street, not have to worry about fences. Um, these you pay a monthly fee for the benefit of having, you know, your lawn care and snow removal taken care of. These were built in about the last two years. Um, prices in there. Um, there hasn't been many resales. I had a client who built one in there. It was over four hundred thousand, um, and they had actually, I guess they downsized a little bit, but more so they right sized. They were in a condo which was actually three levels. Okay, so they were getting older. He was diagnosed with MS. They wanted to get to one level, so this is what they opted to to go with it, fit for their needs. And then lastly, I've got up here, there's a lot of new construction going on. Probably not enough to fill the need for the aging population. But this is one, I haven't visited it yet, we just recently got information on it. It's called the Courtyards at Barrett Haven, it's in Darby Prairie. It's near the Barrett Haven um, Memory Care um, building over there, it's luxury, low maintenance lifestyle community. They're offering ranch homes and your own private courtyard. Base prices are 435 to 505. They have some nature trails there, a 15 acre lake. Um, again, this is just a brand new option that's that's coming up. If you know if you're looking for some new construction with um, you know, the, the low maintenance, easy kind of uh, lifestyle. And there, there's many others, but um, again, like I said, not enough, not enough. Um, I think this is the last one. This one is um, Village Point. This was built by Payne Family Homes, which is no longer in existence. Um, it's in St. Peter's off of Mid Rivers. Those that frequent Andy's, you know where that's at. Mm -hmm. Andy's ice cream, I know where that's at. So on these, um, the, there it's 57 detached villas. 
the fees are only 150 a month. It's for your yard, landscape, snow, and it does have irrigation that they cover. Plus, you pay an annual fee of $350 to their reserve fund for maintaining parking lots and common areas. So you have to take that into account as well. These have been selling for around $400,000. And those were a little over $200,000 when they first built. <laughs> One square, right by where I live. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> What's the square footage on those? Um, they're pretty, they small. Let me see if I have that noted. I don't have that noted. Yeah, okay. Um, I would, I would anybody like know for sure? My guess would be they're about fourteen to 1,500 square feet. I think they're like 1,200 square feet. Are they? Like That's small? Really? Okay. Are you going to talk a little bit about insurance? What would you like to talk well, about? The higher the HOA fee, the more it more is covered. For instance, roofs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if the roof is not covered by the HOA fee, then you better get probably an assessment when it comes time to do the roofs. I mean, isn't that the way it's normally handled? So. <clears throat> or, if, or do you have insurance on your condo that will pay for the roof when it's time to do it? Okay. So um, let's start with the single family home. Okay, single family home, you're responsible for yeah. everything. Yeah. Okay, so you're paying a full homeowner's insurance policy, which insures your roof. When it comes time to replace the roof, you're paying all, a deductible. All insured, all insured. Yes, yeah. yes, insurance okay. Everything, right? All right, so some communities, you're paying in the HOA towards a master insurance policy that the association takes out on all of the buildings and the roofs, okay? Now, you have to dive into the indentures again because it probably says, even though they're responsible for paying- If the Krusik family is in the building, please come to the youth desk. If the Krusik family is in the building, please come to the youth desk. Thank you. When it comes time to replacing the roofs, um, the, the association has to pay the master policy deductible. If there's not enough funds in their reserve accounts, what are they gonna do? They're gonna come to each homeowner and ask for an, an extra amount or a special assessment. So they all have different ways of doing it and you have to dig into the details. Yeah, my only point is you have to yes. be real careful that there's low HOA fees. Oh, for sure. Because the lower the fee is, the more, the more assessments you're gonna have, essentially. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything goes up in price. So, you know, to, to go into a place and not think that the fees are gonna be increased is, you know, pretty naive, but Yes, you want to be careful of that, and you want to make sure that the development is financially sound. And Joel's going to kind of get into that here, I think, next. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably currently pay um, your homeowners association fee or the HOA fee on your single family house. But it's a little different when we're talking about single family HOA versus condo and the villa HOA as we've been talking about. Um, once you are in contract on the purchase of a villa or a condo, make sure that your realtor includes a condo rider or a similar lifestyle rider. This is very important. This requires the seller to provide you with a resale certificate. Um, you then have five days after receipt of that to, to review a complete copy and the documentation. So within that documentation, you'll receive a balance sheet, income and expense statement, operating budget, condominium declaration, bylaws, rules and regulations. So this is everything that we've been talking about. The insurance, the special assessments, um, the fees, everything. So it's a lot to read, but it's very important to read through that. If there's something in this documentation that you don't like, or it doesn't fit your lifestyle, you don't like what it covers, you don't think it covers enough, you can back out of that contract within that five-day timeline. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important part of purchasing a villa or a condo. 
This no. is, sorry, go ahead. This is where you get that package like this, mm -hmm. okay? So five days goes by really quick when you've got that much documentation um, to review. Yeah, and I'll talk to you about fences, sheds, you know, pets, all those things. Anything you could ever want to know. Yeah. So let's kind of look at the differences here um, between these. So single family, you, um, the fees are usually paid an annually, and they cover common ground, entrance sign, amenities. Um, these fees are anywhere from $0 from the older neighborhoods that don't have amenities to $400 the newer neighborhoods that do have lots of amenities. Um, the kind of the main difference of these is that operations wise the HOA board is usually made up of homeowners within that neighborhood so um, homeowners vote on members and changes and everything is handled within that neighborhood so pros of living in a single family you have quite a bit of freedom um, of what you want to do to your house cons they can be restrictive of exterior changes types of fences sheds um, if you have a camper, boat, or a business vehicle parked in your driveway for too long, um, sometimes they don't always like that. Um, so next we have the condos. Um, like we've been talking about, there's always a monthly fee and sometimes a second annual fee. The monthly fee can cover insurance, roads, lawn care, snow removal, sometimes utilities such as water, sewer, trash. Um, and these are always disclosed to you up front um, in that resale certificate so that you know what to expect. And they're also required to um, let you know about any upcoming special assessments um, so that you're not caught off guard. Uh, average cost for a monthly fee is around $200. Annual fee, $300. Um, as you listen to her, they vary, but that's an average. Operations, they're typically run by an outside management company like you were saying. Um, pros, maintenance free, and you do have access to amenities. Cons, they can be restrictive of pets, what you put on your balcony, what you put in your windows, and there's usually no, no fencing. And then lastly, villa. So again, monthly and annual fees, um, about the same, monthly 200, annually 300. Operations, again, they're run by an outside management company. Pros, maintenance free, you can enjoy amenities. Cons, um, they can also be restrictive of fences, pets, um, the number of pets, the size of pets, and they could also be restrictive of, again, the campers, boats, cars parked in the driveway for an extended period of time. So hopefully that gives you a little overview um, of the HOAs. Are there any more questions about the HOAs while we're still here? <laughs> Confusing. Well, my HOA, even though it's made up of homeowners, the company's office is Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And lots of times they will override what the board has voted on. Mm -hmm. And that's actually covered in the covenants and restrictions. It mm -hmm. says that they can make the final decision mm -hmm. on different things. Mm -hmm. One of the things I personally would recommend to anyone who's looking, considering purchasing in this particular development, is besides getting all this documentation, is go talk to your neighbors because this lady might be your neighbor and say, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's great living here, except, and I'm really unhappy about that, and this is why. So, I mean, the people who live there tell you the good and the bad. So. It's something I just always recommend. Um, rental options. So in these pictures, we have River's Edge in St. Charles off of Freedom's Road. Down below, these are Breeze Park Villas in Weldon Springs. These are two examples of age-restricted rentals. So River's Edge being an independent community, minimum age of 62. Um, renting there, they have happy hours with live entertainment, um, garden, dining venues, movie theater, swimming pool. This is more of a faith-inspired community with an on-site chaplain and religious services. So another thing to think about in your choice of living. Excuse me. So staying in your home. 
So you may decide none of these options we talked about are right for you and you wanted to stay in your home, which is, which is great. So in that, here are some things that we think that you should strongly consider. Um, so in, in talking to folks, a lot of people will say, like we were doing a health fair recently and the lady said, you know, or I talked to her, like, are you thinking about moving? And she said, no, they're gonna have to drag me out of my house. And I said, understood, great. Is the house working for you still? Well, not really. So that's when we get into these conversations. But there are things that, you know, like I said, as you age, it's more harder to keep it up. So the general maintenance of the interior, exterior, major appliance replacement, siding, roofs, the safety and accessibility of the home as you age, and then about doing upgrades that are needed or you want to make in your home. So like she said, staying in your home is going to require a certain amount of maintenance. And we talk, when we talk about maintenance, there's proactive maintenance and there's reactive maintenance. Um, so we want to talk about a few major maintenance items. Um, the first one is the roof. Um, don't replace your roof unless you have to. Um, think about is the savings on insurance worth it versus how long you plan to stay in that home? Or how long is it going to take you to recoup that total investment? If you need a new roof, by all means do it, but don't do it just because you know insurance will say you'll get a better, better rate. Um, also watch for upsells. Um, a 50-year roof might sound good, but it means um, 50, warranted for 50 years unrelated to damage. So if you do it one day and there's a hailstorm the next day, you're going to need a new roof still. Painting and siding. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say about the roof. Um, in watching for upsells, we had a roofer come door to door a couple months ago and told us we needed a new roof. And we were a little shocked, so we called someone that we trusted and had him come look at our roof, and he said, no, your roof is good for another 10 years. So just be cautious, um, not saying all salesmen are bad, but just get a second opinion or talk to someone that, that you trust, because um, a roof roof is an expensive maintenance item. Can I mention something? Yeah. yeah. I had a similar experience. Somebody come knock on the door, one of them know they can look at my roof. They did. They said I had hail damage. They called my insurance company, got the insurance adjuster on the roof, and convinced him I needed a new roof. Mm -hmm. so yes. It can work for you. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can, sure. And there are very legitimate companies, and yes, you do need somebody to advocate on your side. Yes, I own my roof old. Seven years old. Good for you. I got a new one. Good for you. <laughs> I thought they were crazy. I can't get my roof replaced for anything, so it doesn't leak. We're still waiting for a really awesome hailstorm to damage it and get it replaced, but it hasn't happened on our house yet. Um, next, paint and siding. So ask yourself, is siding important or can I just, you know, paint it? Um, if painting, choose a color according to your goal. If you're going to stay there forever, pick whatever color you want. Pink, whatever color. <laughs> if you're planning on selling it in a couple years, pick a neutral color, something that a buyer would enjoy as well. Uh, major mechanical replacements, so like HVAC, kitchen appliances, these are things that can typically be fixed instead of completely replaced. So again, um, you know, get a couple opinions, call someone, a trusted professional to um, give, you the, give you their opinion. Uh, termites, so structural damage requires several years of of termites, um, but cosmetic damage can occur on sheetrock, behind wallpaper, in harvesty areas. And if you are worried about termites, you can have a termite inspection done. They cost about $100 for them to come out um, and look at it. There are also annual termite warranties. So if you want them to come out more frequently, they cost about two to $300 a year for that warranty. Um, we touched on mold a little bit before, but mold can be a result of many things. It can be a leak, it can be rainwater. Um, even if your shower's not being cleaned properly, um, that can also cause mold. So mold is a serious thing. Um, it can cause health, health concerns and it does need to be addressed if you have mold. 
And then lastly, home warranty plans. Um, these can be purchased to cover major systems, similar to an insurance policy. Um, they cost about $600 a year, um, and then you pay a deductible at the time of service, maybe $75, $100, whatever. Um, and as realtors, we have access to different plans and special pricing. Um, the benefit of a home warranty would be when you do have something go wrong, you call the warranty company and they have someone come out versus you just going through the yellow pages or Googling a random person and having them come fix whatever, whatever went wrong. Rebates? Mm -hmm. uh, maintenance? Maintenance. I missed it. Sorry. I was thinking about the home warranty plan. So I honestly am not an advocate of them. They're there to make money. Okay. So I have had them before in real estate properties that I've purchased. Sometimes it's been to our benefit to where we've gotten like a new electric panel. Okay. Other times hasn't, you know, it was a waste of money. There's fine print. There is fine print and there's <laughs> differences. But you can typically, and, and they're being more advertised now, you hear them on the radio and that, but mm -hmm. typically if you go through a realtor, you can get a better rate, better premium for that plan. They're good for one year, they're renewable. So just some things to think about that, you know, can potentially help. Um, so we wanted to talk about um, home improvement loan program. So adding all these things up, of course, maintenance can be very expensive. There is some assistance available through St. Charles County. It's a program called the Home Improvement Loan Program. So this is a list of qualified repair services. Um, the program provides up to ten percent, or up to ten thousand dollars, is a zero percent five-year forgivable loan for home improvements, emergency repairs, um, and property maintenance concerns. There are eligibility and income requirements, such as, you know, one, you have to be in St. Charles County. Um, I don't think O'Fallon is included, however. So um, you do have to submit an application and have an inspection done, um, and there's brochures available for the program if you have any interest in that. City of St. Peter's has got one, but the restrictions are pretty limited. Mm -hmm. They are. They are. Um, there are also rebates available through Spire and Amrin to help with the cost of maintenance. Um, you know, companies want us to be more energy efficient and use more energy efficient systems, and so they offer these rebates. Um, Amrin, the rebates can be up to $1,800 back, so that's pretty significant. And that would be for air conditioners, heat pumps, smart thermostats. Um, we recently installed a nest in our house, and so we did take advantage of that smart thermostat rebate. And then Spire's rebates um, can be up to $350 back. So that's on hot water heaters, thermostats, and furnaces. So just make sure you check the details um, before you purchase the system to make sure that it does qualify um, for that rebate. And you can just apply um, on their websites. So in our home, we were an all electric home um, and we decided since the components were extremely old, we would go ahead and pay to be connected to gas and install gas furnace. Um, so we did take advantage of all of the rebates for furnace and air conditioner and we also replaced to electric hot water heaters. So we got some nice rebates, but I will tell you, you have to, for installation, you have to go through one, uh, have to be accredited and be on the approved list of who installs them. It can't be, I don't think they will necessarily approve it if you as the homeowner install it. So what's installed <laughs> and who installed it? What's installed and who's installed. And then on one case, I was kind of irritated at my husband because he handled it, but um, the sear on the air conditioner had, we paid a little bit more, we would have gotten a much more rebate, larger rebate, and he was kind of, didn't look into the details, so he wasn't aware of it until I go and fill out the rebates and go, 
What were you thinking? So anyway, but yeah, they are they were nice rebates. And by the way, we have been saving quite a bit, but I know electrics been going up as well. Um, talking about staying in your home. So this is a fairly um, new program to our area, and it's about staying in your home. Um, you sell it, and then you lease it back from this company, and it's called True Hold. And, you know, basically it's a maintenance-free option and allows you to stay in your home. So you go from being a homeowner to a tenant in your, in your actual home, okay? So True Hold buys your property, they save for fair market value, and they lease it back to you for fair market value. So the benefit of this is it allows you to unlock 100% of the equity that you have in your home while you continue to stay in your home. And without the burden of upkeep maintenance and you know everything that comes with home ownership. Um, True Hope says they pay full price. Um, they close in 30 days. They're gonna cover you know, maintenance, equipment replacement, uninspected repairs, they also will pay, of course they own the home, they're gonna pay the property taxes and insurance while you live there. You would pay the rent and utilities. Um, and if needed, True Hold says that they will make small upgrades that will help minimize safety risks in the home. So it is um, designed initially um, for, you know, us older folks for aging in place, but there are other situations that it would work for. So um, it could be for, you know, you're struggling to find the perfect place and you want to take advantage of the market today. Okay, so you sell your home, you rent it back, now you're, you're free to go take your time to purchase something else. Um, they only have a minimum of six months. So if you're having uh, something built, that would be another scenario. Building times are taking now um, around a year to get a house built. <laughs> so um, it's difficult with the timing of the, the market um, vulnerability right now. Are those subject to yearly lease rates? Um, I'm going to say that of course, you are subject to having your rent increased, um, like anything that you're, you know, any place that you're going to rent. So I think they would do the minimum is six month lease, which is awesome for certain situations. But if it's going to be a longer term situation, you're going to want the longest term lease you can get to lock in your rate. So again, I have not worked with them yet. Just letting you know that such an option exists. Um, so this is really helpful if you want to age in place and you want to have some liquid cash um, in the pocket. So when you stay in your home, you will eventually probably need or want some updates done to your home. Um, a realtor, a buyer, and a homeowner, again, all have different definitions of the word updated. But generally speaking, updated means it's not the original finishes. Um, so these are a few updates that would pay off um, in the sale of your house. Replacing countertops, removing wallpaper, again, choosing a neutral color. Um, if you plan to sell it, that would, would appeal to other buyers. So how can you pay for these things? Um, so let's say you, you want to do some of these updates and you don't have money in your pocket. So there's quite a few options out there. Um, so it depends on the equity, which is the value in your home versus how much of an existing loan you have, if any. So using the equity in your home is, you know, one of the smartest ways to make updates. Uh, first option is a home equity line of credit, also known as a HELOC. Um, it's a line of credit secured by your home. Gives you a revolving credit line for larger expenses. You can usually get this through your local bank or credit union. HELOCs typically have um, lower interest rates than other loans. Um, and to qualify for a HELOC, again, it's based on the equity of your home. Typically, it's about, um, most of them go like 85% 
um, of the value in your home. Um, so, you know, depending on how much equity you have, that could be a pretty hefty amount of uh, money available. Cash out refinance. This is taking out a new mortgage, okay? And taking advantage of the equity that you have in. So they're gonna give you money back when you put in place a new loan. Um, interest rates have risen quite a bit in the last, what, six months? Um, so bear in mind that you will you would have to accept the current rate, so um, it's not always a smart option to do. When interest rates were going down the other way, a lot of people were refinancing and also getting ca the cash out because it was kind of a no-brainer. But you are borrowing on the equity of your home, basically, and that's what happened when the real estate market um, crashed was because people ended up being upside down then. Uh, reverse mortgage, this can be a refi or a purchase. And um, this works by using a portion of your home equity to pay off your existing mortgage on your home. Uh, you're not required to make monthly payments. Um, the loan balance doesn't come due until the final borrower sells or turns 150. And that's literally in their contract, 150. Mm -hmm or you fail to pay your taxes, insurance, or neglect to maintain the home. So you're still responsible for paying your property taxes and homeowner's insurance. And this option is only available for seniors that are over 62 and have at least 50% equity in, in the home. Uh, last, a renovation loan. This is a refinance transaction based on the future value of the house when the repairs are completed. They can be pretty complicated. <laughs> um, one of the uh, people we will have on our next panel, this is something that um, she does quite a bit of, um, is these um, renovation loans. Um, so she can talk more about that, but again, she'll mainly be talking about the reverse mortgages. Um, so the existing mortgage along with the costs and expenses of remodeling are rolled into one new mortgage. Renovation funds are escrowed with the lender who then disperses funds to the contractor as each phase of renovation is completed. So all of these options are associated with home equity. But let's say you don't have enough equity in your home and you need some other options. So the most obvious one is use cash on hand if you have the money. Um, secondly, a loan or disbursement on a retirement account. So taking money out of your, require, your retirement account. Always talk to a financial advisor first. Everyone's situations are different, but that is an option. Um, contractor funded loan. So if a homeowner doesn't refinance their home, but they still need to finance repairs, um, builders or contractors provide financing in addition to your mortgage and current liabilities. Um, credit cards, this is rarely a good option, but it is an option. And then lastly, a personal loan. You can check with your local bank. So these are all non-mortgage based options to fund um, maintenance that needs to be done on your home. So, as we age, we talked about it may ne be necessary to make changes or upgrades uh, to keep us and our loved ones safe. Um, and ultimately, we just want you to be you know, safe in your home. So things that to consider to make changes in your home um, as you age and play more. Um, so the challenge with adding them is knowing um, Having a contractor that knows exactly how they have to be mounted um, for proper, properly securing on the wall so they don't uh, pull out. Um, there are professionals that specialize in this. Um, one of the cooler things that I have seen is called a bathtub cutout. Okay, so if you have um, you have a shower, it's a bathtub with a shower head up there they will cut out a portion of your bathtub so it's a step-in now. Those are extremely reasonable to have done um, and I think make a lot of sense. Um, 
smoke detectors, you know, as we age, we start to lose some hearing. Um, you always want to make sure you have enough smoke detectors, the batteries are working. The local fire department normally do it complimentary. They'll install, they'll switch out your batteries for you. Another thing along that line is the for EMS and fire, you can have a special box installed at your front door um, with the code. So they don't have to, if it's an emergency, they don't have to break down your door. They've got access to that code. I have one of those in that break. Yeah, mm -hmm. good, good. Um, alarm systems, you know, um, just be careful about contracts. Um, you know, there's different choices where the equipment is free, you might pay a higher monthly fee. So, you know, look at your options. Um, widening doorways if you have a wheelchair or walker, again, um, a lot of times those changes can be made in the home that you currently live in. Um, installing the comfort height toilets, um, which I think are really like the standard now because anytime I know I'm not using one of those, it feels really odd and I'm a very short person, but, um, but those are helpful um, as we age as well. Um, relocating the laundry to the main level. Typically, it's not as difficult as most people think. It's a matter of have, having the space on the main level. Can be, you know, a bedroom converted to it or a closet. And installing a chairlift or an elevator um, might be more economical. Um, there are some lower cost elevators um, that can be installed in a home also. I had a stairlift for them, mm -hmm. $20,000. Mm. But I have a curved stairway. Oh, yes. Yeah, but you, but it, you find it very useful, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's allowed you to stay and on now. I have three floors. So. Uh. <laughs> well, that's quite a whole ride. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pack up the seat on it. I mean, it's got all the bells. Pack a lunch. But that's cool. <laughs> that is really. <laughs> so to recap, we talked about the value of your home, um, and we realize your home is typically your most valuable asset, so enjoy it or use the equity in it if needed. We talked about when to downsize or right size, uh, about the signs that it's time to, to consider making a change into something more manageable. Um, living options and benefits. We also talked about alternative living options if you aren't ready for a retirement community, such as a condo, villa, renting um, being another option, and also aging in place. So you may decide staying in your home <coughs> is the best option. Um, and you may just need to make some, some changes in it to keep you safe. So we would like to take any further questions that you have, um, and we hope that you enjoy the information we provided. So is there anything further we can answer for you at this time? No, if not. Yeah, so um, we want to invite you back next month. Like Stephanie said, we're trying to do this the third Wednesday of every month. So that would be July 20th, 10 to 1130 again. Um, and these are our two special guests, Mary Flynn and Dennis Cooper. And they're going to talk about what is a reverse mortgage and why do I need to know about them. So we'll cover how they work, myths and rumors associated with them, how or why they can be used in financial and estate planning and also how they can be used to buy a new home or refinance your current one um, payment-free. So we have flyers in the back um, if you'd like to invite a friend. Um, remember the date and time. We don't have a room number yet, um, so when we call you the day before um, to remind you, we will let you know what that room number is. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, and we do have evaluation forms, and we would love to get your feedback. Um, so that we can, you know, continue to provide free education and make it more beneficial for you. 
Um, one of the um, attendees last month, she said, I really, really need um, some basic information on estate planning. So, yeah, yeah the month uh, August, we're working on lining that out. Okay, and um, just to let you know, rules of engagement for people that we have also come and give information is there's no selling. They're just here to give free information. If you need further information, you're free to contact them. So, yeah, that's it. Again, thanks, thanks for everyone coming. And I want to come take a ride on your <laughs> <Yeah>. restoring <laughs> for chairlift. <laughs>